What's up, guys? It's James here from Smoking UK, where we review, communicate, and educate all things tobacco. Today, we've got an absolutely fantastic looking cigar. We've got the Padermo 20th anniversary in the Robusto size. So let's run the intro. Let's get this cut. Let's get it lit. Run the intro. Now, if you've been a subscriber to us for a while, you'll know last week we dropped the Podomo 10th anniversary Connecticut, and that seems to have taken us two weeks to fill. So I've been looking at this, sat in the humidor for about a month now, and I've been dying to get it cut and get it lit. I've smoked the 10th anniversary before, and I know it's an absolutely fantastic cigar, and this is why I really wanted to bring that cigar to you. But I've not yet smoked this one. And I would say Podomo is probably one of my favorite new world cigars, especially formatting in Nicaragua. So this looking at me, every time I go in the humidor has been killing me. So let's not prolong it anymore. Let's get it cut. Now, whenever I'm smoking a new cigar, I always go in with a straight cut. I always feel like that's the best way you can experience a cigar. Straight cut is probably my favorite anyway. And this has got quite a thicker ring gauge compared to most Robustos, which we'll get into in a little while. So I'm just going straight in with a straight cut absolutely perfect cut every single time on the nose get like a lot of straw it smells extremely light but there's there's very little like cedar notes or anything on that it almost smells creamy really sweet which is stereotypical very similar flavors to the 10th anniversary. The airflow is absolutely huge. That's really nice. The cigar itself, the tobacco is really packed in there. It's a nice firm feel to the cigar, but it's also bouncing back. So we know that the tobacco is not so crammed in there. We're not gonna get any plugging issues. Obviously I've just done the dry draw, so I know the airflow is perfect, but that tobacco is really packed in there. The wrapper feels almost like silk. It is so smooth. And I said this about the 10th anniversary, and I've said that about other Podermo cigars before as well. The feel of these cigars feels luxurious, feels premium, feels high quality. And it does, it almost feels like a velvet, like a silk. It's almost a shame that we're gonna have to set fire to it. <laughs> of course, I'm using my smoking lighter, which I'll leave a link in the description below. Hands down, the best single jet flame lighter you're ever gonna use. And I absolutely love using a single jet flame lighter. You can be so accurate with where you want that flame to go. A single jet flame lighter is also perfect for when, if you're getting an uneven burn, and you only have to touch up a slight little bit, you can be more accurate where you want the flame to go. The only problem is when you start getting these triple flames, quadruple flames, and I've seen people with a six flame lighter, but you can't really be that accurate with the flame. And you end up blowing massive holes in the side of your cigar. And what you always have to remember, and I say this in every single video, so if you are new, is you're not using the flame of the cigar to light it. Notice how the flame isn't even touching the cigar. It's nowhere near it. I'm using the heat from the flame to light the cigar. I'm starting off on the edge until I get a nice, big, thick black line around the edge. And I'm working in circles and I'm working my way to the center of that cigar. So a nice, thick, oily black line around the outside now. And work in circles and work my way to the center until I get a nice layer of gray and silver ash on the foot of that cigar. Now, I remember when I lit up the 10th anniversary, we had a real, almost like harsh spice to begin with, which really died back during the second third. This is nowhere near as strong. You're not really getting any spice or any bitterness on that initial light up. And when I say there's, there's no spice, there is a very little amount of spice. You're always going to get that with the tobaccos used in this. 
but it's kind of just teetering here at the back of the tongue. It's not very dominating. It's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to put off any kind of smoker, even if you're new to smoking cigars. It's not going to put you off. There's a lot of vanilla, a little bit of white pepper. It's very fresh. It's not heavy on the mouth at all. And what I've got to say, even though it is a thicker ring gauge compared to most Robustos and most standard Robustos that you get, it fits very comfortably in the hand and it fits very comfortably in the mouth. That is really delightful. Now, if you watched our last video, and if you haven't, I'll leave a link in the description below and I'll leave it in one of the tags above. The 10th Anniversary Connecticut is probably one of my favorite Padermo cigars. And I don't want to come jumping out the gate straight away, but I feel like this one's actually going to be better. There's no real harshness on the starting light up of this cigar which is what you find with most cigars. After all, when you look at a tobacco leaf, the point of the leaf is always placed at the top of the cigar. It has a higher ignition, so it actually helps with the lighting process. But because of that, a lot of the flavors are normally bitter and it's strong. And I say this in most videos, this is why if you ever light up a new cigar and you're not really enjoying it straight away, give it 10, 15 minutes. Give it to about half an inch to an inch into the smoke. And I can guarantee you that bitterness and that spiciness that you're getting from the light up will completely drop that. The smoke output is absolutely huge. And that spice, that ever so slight amount of spice I was getting to begin with is already dropping back. And we're still very much at the beginning of this cigar. So let's actually have a look into the blend and the construction on this cigar. So I actually mentioned at the beginning, this is a slightly bigger Vitola. It's a slightly bigger ring gauge compared to most of Buster that you're going to find out there. So this is a 5 by 56 ring gauge. So we're probably looking a little bit between 50 and 70 minute smoking session. Obviously, it all depends on how quick you smoke. I'm quite a quick smoker, so I might get about 50 minutes out of this. The actual construction of this, of course, being Padomo, you have a filler and binder of Nicaraguan tobacco. And the wrapper, we have an Ecuadorian Connecticut, which is aged for eight years before spending a further eight months in a bourbon cask. And that's probably where we're getting those sweety profiles, those vanillas and those fruity flavor profiles that we're getting on the palate, especially on the retro hail. That's probably coming from those bourbon casks. And I visited the Paderma factory quite recently on the recent Tour Tour 2024. And I put my whole head inside of one of their bourbon casks that's full of the tobacco. And the aromas that we were getting off that is absolutely exquisite. I can't describe the aroma in the air in that room with all the bourbon casks. This is technically classed as a mild cigar. Now that we've kind of got past that first initial burn, I definitely agree with that. It is definitely a mild cigar. It is very light on the palate. It's not heavy. That initial light up, we was getting a very slight amount of spice, not as much as we were getting on the 10th anniversary. That really came out the gate strong with a real powerful spice, then it really died down. With this, it was kind of just pondering at the back. It was more of like a white pepper kind of feel and that kind of spice and that texture in the mouth. That's completely, that's, that's really starting to die back now. And again, we're still only about a centimetre into this smoke. I said at the beginning, I think we might be on the way to knock the 10th anniversary Connecticut off its number one pedestal for me. Depending on how the rest of this cigar goes. <laughs> absolutely delightful. This would pair absolutely beautifully with coffee. Another thing I've got to point out is the presentation on Padermo cigars. If you walk into any humidor, even if you look inside a smaller humidor like mine, a Padermo cigar is always going to stand out. They leave literally no stone unturned. I've walked through the Padermo factory from how they hand pick and hand select each and individual seeds and the amazing machinery Nick Padermo has invented himself to be able to sift through and find the most premium seeds all the way through to the farms, all the way through to the curing barns and how they ferment and how they age the, the cask, seeing it being rolled, seeing it being wrapped. I've, from literally seed to smoke, I've been on that process with Fedoma and they literally leave no stone unturned. And the presentation on the cigar is definitely one of them. You cannot deny that that is an absolutely beautiful 
looking cigar with a presentation. Of course, we have that, that stereotypical Padermo logo in the center and a beautiful gold band with the 20th anniversary underneath it on that red band. And for the price that you're gonna pay for this at the point of posting this video, I'm very surprised these don't retail for more. The texture and the smoke in your mouth as well is almost like cream. It's almost like a thick velvet. You can definitely feel the smoke in your mouth. You can feel it moving around. And some people might not like that, but I'm loving every second. That hay and that straw really comes through in the retro hail. And this is why I urge a lot of cigar smokers to learn how to retro hail. After all, most of your taste receptacles are in your nose. This is why whenever you see people eat not great looking food, they end up holding their nose. So it's supposed to dull down the flavor. But this is why I urge a lot of people to learn how to take the smoke out through their nose because you're just gonna heighten that smoking experience. Now, the best way to learn how to retrohale is you're gonna mess up. You're gonna inhale the smoke and you're gonna cough up a lung, but you gotta do it wrong enough times to learn how to do it right. The biggest tip I can give you is to push your tongue to the lid of your mouth and then breathe out your nose. A heads up, when you first start doing it, it is gonna burn. You're gonna get like a tingling sensation across your cheeks, across your nose, maybe a little bit in your head. It's not gonna feel great to begin with. It's a very new experience. I can guarantee you've not experienced anything like it before. It's not like exhaling vape through your nose or a cigarette through your nose. The smoke is very dense on a cigar, so it is gonna burn a little bit. Once you got used to it, you'll be able to just do it every single time. But push the tongue to the lid of your mouth and slowly, don't do it quick because your nose is gonna feel like it's on fire. Breathe slowly through the nose, almost like yoga. Breathe it in and exhale it out. That's my little hint for you for today. Tongue to the lid of your mouth and then exhale through the nose slowly. And I know we have a lot of cigar smokers that watch these videos. If you've got a better tip or if you've got even more tips on how someone can learn how to retrohale, put it in the comments below. It'd be really interesting to find out how you guys enjoy your cigars. One thing I've got to say, and I mentioned this in last week's video when we were smoking the 10th anniversary as well, is on every single time I light up a Padermo cigar, I'm almost transported back to sitting in that trailer, being dragged around the fields by a tractor with Nick Padermo sat there at the front with his microphone. It was such a surreal experience and it was so amazing. And I can almost feel the heat on my skin. I can smell the aromas in the air. And I'm such a strong believer. I'm very passionate when it comes to cigars. I think that's what makes cigar smokers stand out from every other tobacco lover on in the planet. Cigars hold memories and cigars hold thought. We don't just smoke these as a dedication to time. We smoke these to remember all the amazing times that we've had in our life. And this puts me straight back into Nicaragua, surrounded by some of the most amazing people I've ever met. And Jamal, of course. <laughs> It'll be interesting to find out if he watches this. But it is, every time I sit down and smoke a Padermo cigar, it just transports me straight back there. And it almost gives me this hunger in my stomach, like, like I've been kept away from home. It makes me feel like I need to get back out there. And if a cigar can make me feel that, what other products on the planet can you say that can make someone feel that kind of hunger? Now I'm hoping that you can see this as well. And I mentioned this in most videos because I didn't realize the importance and how much your head of ash can actually tell you about your cigar. But we've got a lovely head of white ash in that cigar. And that indicates to us that the soil that the plant was grown in was so well looked after. It was full of the right nutrients. It had the right pH levels, the right nitrogen levels and everything else that goes into it. When we strip the cigars back, what do we get? We have farming, we have agriculture. Strip everything away, strip the cigar lounges out, get rid of the spirits, get rid of the camaraderie. Think back to what these actual are farming it's agriculture and it basically means the farmer or nick padermo and his operation cared so much about this final product they wanted to make sure every single step of the process was perfect before they even took before they even put the plant in the ground and throughout this video i'm going to leave little snippets from around the farm from around the rolling factory so you can have a little bit of a deeper insight into the padermo operations because i had never seen anything like it. It was hands down one of my favorite factories to visit on that trip. What I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this cigar. Join me 
halfway through the second third, coming into the final third. I'll give you my overall verdict. I'll give you if there's been any transitions, how the flavor profiles have changed, if we've had any problems, and more importantly, what kind of cigar smoker would I recommend this cigar for? So stick around for that. Enjoy these next few clips of the Padermo factory and join me in a minute as we finalize and conclude the Padermo 20th anniversary Connecticut Robusto. Join me in a minute. What's up guys and welcome back. As you can see, I'm coming very close to the end of this cigar now and what an amazing smoke this has been. I can't actually put into words exactly how mild this became, especially during that second third and coming into this final third. That spice that we were getting on the initial light up might creep back in, but this is, I would put this almost on the same pedestal of lightness as the Brickhouse Double Connecticut. That is how light this is. This would pair absolutely beautifully with coffee. It would also taste amazing with rum and bourbon. I feel like if you're going to go more down the scotch route, I think that is going to overpower the cigar and you're going to lose the tobacco completely. And I think you're going to be wasting your money. It's going to render the cigar useless. Irish whiskey might be a good shout that might pair okay if you go for more something like a red breast 15 or a 12 but this has been absolutely beautiful i think if you're first getting into cigars and you want to start smoking the more premium end of of new world cigars i think this would be an absolutely great smoke for you yes you have got that initial light up so you're almost training your palate for those spicy profiles but just as it starts to really heighten up it takes a step back and it becomes stupidly mild but at the same time, if you're into the full-bodied cigars and you know, like real strength and real all the Maduros and stuff like that, this would make a really good morning smoke for you. But if you're new to cigars, this would be an all-round great cigar. I feel like if you're going to smoke this after dinner, like a late evening or on a cold winter's evening, don't think this is going to be a good evening cigar. I think this is going to be a really good morning to afternoon to mid to late afternoon stick, maybe early evening stick. I've loved every single second of it. The construction has been absolutely second to none. I haven't had to relight it. The ash has been coming off perfectly and we have got an absolutely great burn on that cigar. The airflow has been perfect. It's not once become plugged and it's been really enjoyable. I wanna say there's been huge transitions. I'm still getting all those hay and those vanilla flavor profiles that I was getting at the beginning. The only real difference is that spice that we're getting has completely gone. There is no spice on this cigar at this present time. And it is incredibly mild. The 10th anniversary was very medium bodied. It wasn't really strong, but it definitely still had the spicy profiles throughout the entire stick. And it was definitely belonged in that medium bodied bracket. But this well and truly deserves to be in the mild. This has been absolutely delightful. And Connecticut's get a lot of bad name. They get a lot of bad rep, especially from cigar smokers who've been smoking for a while. If you smoke Cuban cigars, you feel like it's almost kind of like a pointless smoke. It doesn't really give you that strength. Now, not every single cigar has to have strength. It's just gonna have really good flavor. And that is what you're getting from this. You're getting cream, you're getting vanilla, you're getting hay and straw and earth. You're getting that mild spice to begin with and that white pepper. This is a really mild cigar that is just full of flavor from start to finish. And if you are a Cuban smoker, if you do like the full bodied cigars, I really urge you to give this one a try. I remember when I smoked the Double Connecticut, the Brick House, I recommended if you like the full body cigars to maybe give it a miss, it's not gonna be your thing. But this, even though it is mild, I really think you're still gonna get something from it. And I think you're gonna really enjoy the cigar. I'd honestly recommend it to anybody. 
and I'm quite glad I've got another one sat in the humidor resting that I can smoke in a couple of months time. So thank you for coming on this journey. Thank you for coming along with me and smoking the 20th anniversary from Podermo in the Connecticut. I obviously haven't smoked this one before and the excitement I got from the 10th anniversary last week, I couldn't wait to get this lit up. And I'm so glad that I did. And I can't believe it's been sat there for weeks staring at me. I wish I lit this up sooner. It's been absolutely delightful. So thank you for coming with me on this journey of discovering the 20th anniversary. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and enable your notification bells. We post twice a week. We have Pipe Tobacco Tuesdays, where we review Pipe Tobacco from around the world. It drops at Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. And of course, we post on Fridays at 7 as well, every single week. So you're going to definitely gain something by following us. So enable that notification. Make sure you go follow us on social media as well. I'll leave the links in the description below. We post every single day over there, whether it's Pipe Tobaccos, Snuffs, Roll Your Own, Cigars, How To's, Giveaways, Promos, Clearance that we're getting rid of and you'll get products at an amazing price. Even now, like scotches, whiskies, rums, gins, tequilas, you will learn something and you'll gain something just from following us over there. So go hit those links in the description below and go give us a follow. Thank you for coming on this journey. I've been James and welcome to the new era of smoking. See you in future videos.